Hello YouTube, I am Joe. Today, let's talk push sticks. And the reason I want to talk these is something that just happened to me yesterday. I was cutting off about a quarter of an inch of material on a piece that looked about like this. Maybe it was one inch wide versus three quarter. But I was cutting it off, got halfway through the cut, about here, and that last piece, that quarter inch, started chattering on here and wanted to make this a missile through my skull. Now, I was luckily using, at the time, a push stick that I could, that I was really loading. Center of the hand, center of the span, big load down. And I could literally muscle it from throwing it back in my face and finish the cut without it throwing the piece at me. And I'm mentioning this because of those push sticks that people have out there. You know, the ones I'm talking about that just hold on to the bare minimum end like this and you kind of push it through. Had I been using something like that, I would have wore this piece for sure. So I thought I would just do this video just to make a safer push stick for everybody. Number one, I put sandpaper on the bottom of mine and that's put on with Spray 77 adhesive on both pieces, let it tack up, put them on, and you really have a good, good hold down. This is on X weight, really heavy duty cloth paper. Uh, whatever you have is going to work. The heavier you have will work better and longer. Okay, these are very simple to make. All you have to do is take a piece of plywood or a piece of whatever it is and start a cut into it, then shut off the saw. And when you stop the cut, roll your, put your blade down, that can be your heel of the cut. And then just saw this off. But that's a real thin heel. That'll only be eighth inch thick. But for me, that would work perfect because I do really, really thin stuff. If you need an adjustable heel, excuse me on the camera there, if you need an adjustable heel, why not make one? It's as simple as a couple of screws, and then you can take that heel off, throw it in the garbage when it gets worn out or what have you. Pretty simple to do. This one I really like because you can bear down on it. If you know the lumber is going to give you a problem, maybe it's pretty thick, maybe you know that's going to get good and warm in there because of that thickness, any heat's a bad thing, it'll warp wood and bad things can come of that. So I like to be able to bear down on stuff and really get a hold of it. And if your pressure is straight down, you got a good chance of making it through or doing whatever you have to, shut the saw off. It's just, I think, quite a bit safer. I've seen some designs out there that I really like the way they look. They have handles on this end like this. But if you think about it, the front end is free to walk. It, you really don't have any control over it. And the further you get away with a handle, or the further you get away with making it tall, that means that lumber has its leverage vantage against you because the distance is further away. So the closer you can be without being in danger, the safer you'll be too. Mine just happened to be just above the fence by uh, maybe inch and a quarter. And I ride my other finger literally on top of the fence and just use it right along the fence. There's no reason you can't have lots of different varying widths. No reason to make one work for all because I'll guarantee it will never work right for all. It will just work for some properly. So you really want to make an assortment of some kind. If I need a job, if I have a job that's doing certain widths and I have a lot of them to run through and it's dangerous, I'll make a special block just for that. I mean, your fingers and hands, you know, you can't grow those back. So you got to do what you can do, right? And again, adjustable heel. It's getting all beat up. Throw it out. Put on another one. You're good to go. Let me know what you guys think. You take care.